This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks around the world. Here now the news for November 21st, 2022. Hello, everybody. The date, of course, is Sunday, November 20th, 2022. And as a Disney fan, you will probably never forget where you were when you heard the news, the shocking, kind of shocking, I guess, news uh, that has just happened, which is uh, that Bob Chapek has been fired as CEO of the Walt Disney Company, effective immediately. And the, the, the probably the part that's actually shocking uh, is that Bob Iger, the former CEO pre uh, Chapek regime, is returning as CEO of the Walt Disney Company. I'm going to break down this information for you real quick. Uh, a, a email was sent to cast members of the Walt Disney Company, and I quote, Dear fellow employees and cast members, it is with an incredible sense of gratitude and humility, and I must admit a bit of amazement that I write to you this evening with the news that I am returning to the Walt Disney Company as Chief Executive Officer. When I look at the creative success of our teams across our studios, Disney General Entertainment, ESPN and International, the rapid growth of our streaming services, the phenomenal reimagining and rebound of our parks, the continued great work of ABC News, and so many other achievements across our businesses. I am in awe of your accomplishments, and I am excited to embark with you on many new endeavors. I know this company has asked so much of you during the past three years, and these times certainly remain quite challenging. But as you've heard me say before, I am an optimist. And if I've learned one thing from my years at Disney, it is that even in the face of uncertainty, perhaps especially in the face of uncertainty, our employees and cast members achieve the impossible. You'll be hearing more from me and your leaders tomorrow and in the weeks ahead. In the meantime, allow me to express my deep gratitude uh, for all that you do. Disney holds a special place in the hearts of people around the globe, thanks to you and your dedication in this company. And its mission to bring joy to people through great storytelling is an inspiration to me every single day. Bob Iger. Of course, uh, just a few days ago, analysts, uh, most notably Jim Cramer on, uh, on you know, national television, I mean, that plays all over the world, honestly, um, called for Disney to remove Chapek as CEO, given the quarterly numbers and uh, the places they felt that the company fell short um, as of late. And several days later, the board of directors has not only made a decision, but I think one that is uh, pretty shocking. You know, you could probably count, um, I would dare say on, on one hand, if not two, the number of, of high profile CEOs that have ever returned to a company after departing. There's not a lot of them that come to mind and Bob Iger will join that list now returning as the head of the Walt Disney Company. I now also have the official statement that the company has released to the public uh, regarding Bob Chapek's uh, dismissal and Bob Iger's return. I'll read that to you now. The Walt Disney Company announced today that Robert A. Iger is returning to lead Disney as chief executive officer, effective immediately. Mr. Iger spent more than four decades at the company, including 15 years as its CEO, has agreed to serve as Disney CEO for two years with ma a mandate from the board to set the strategic direction for new growth and work closely with the board as successor to lead the company at the completion of his term. Mr. Iger succeeds Bob Chapek, who has stepped down from his position. We thank Bob Chapek for his service to Disney over his long career, including navigating the company through the unprecedented challenges of the pandemic, said Susan Arnold, the chairman of the board. The board has concluded that as Disney embarks on an increasingly complex period of industry transformation, Bob Iger is uniquely situated to lead the company through this pivotal period. Mr. Iger has deep respect for D of Disney's senior leadership team, most of whom he worked with closely until his departure as executive chairman 11 months ago. And he's greatly admired by Disney employees worldwide, all of which allow for a seamless transition of leadership. The position of chairman of the board remains unchanged, as with Ms. Arnold serving in that capacity. I am extremely optimistic for the future of this great company and thrilled to be asked by the board to return as its CEO, said Iger. Disney and its incomparable brands and franchises hold a special place in the hearts of so many people around the globe, most especially in the hearts of our employees, the dedication is company, and its mission is an inspiration. I'm deeply honored. I think that's sort of a repeat of what we said before. I think it's just also in the official company release. Um, and this just has a bunch of you. If you're watching this, you know who Bob Iger is. Um, and so... Uh, 
I know we're live and we can take comments and, and talk about this a bit. Um, the, the first thing I want to say is uh, we came out of the D23 Expo and a lot of people were not very optimistic about the direction the company was heading. And I don't know why, um, and it's well documented, you, you can watch it. Um, in all the shows that follow D23, I, I felt an optimism for, for uh, as a Disney fan, as a Disney consumer, that I had not felt in several years, several years. Now, obviously, ourselves and Mr. Chapek have very personal history, um, which may or may not ever see the light of day. It's unknown. Um, at this point, it might now that he's gone. But um, there was an optimism, and I think you just felt something was changing. And then um, the quarterly results were released, and Jim Cramer went on television, and plenty of analysts uh, in, in uh, print and digital media said the same thing, that whoever, it doesn't matter who would be CEO at this time, whoever it is, it, it, they would need to be removed. And the board, to their credit, did it. They finally, finally did it, which is... Um, you know, as a lifelong Disney fan, as someone who loves this company, I've never worked for them, but um, I, I love the company so dearly and what it stands for. And, um, you know, as, as, as someone who watched, I don't know if any of you watched it, but that the, the new Mickey Mouse documentary on Disney Plus, um, I watched that this week and I just got back from Tokyo and it's it's been a lot of really uplifting Disney stuff that has uh, sometimes you need to restore the faith a little bit. Um, and I think between D23 and getting to those parks where things are, are still great and, and hopefully they can be again at the domestic parks. And for that matter, Disneyland Paris, what a rebound they've been on. Um, so hopefully uh, what we've seen happen in Paris is going to happen now with, with great leadership. Um, we will see that rebound again in the domestic parks and the other parks owned and operated by the Walt Disney Company. Um, but I'm I'm in a good place. I, I think I've been thoroughly reminded of why I love this thing. And um, it's now in the hands of people that I fully trust to do the right thing. Josh Tomorrow has, uh, has had my vote of confidence for parks and resorts, um, at least for the last several months. We've seen a big turnaround. And I think uh, whatever was said at D23 felt like it was a move in the right direction, like trashing Harmonious, getting rid of Enchantment. All, all of those little things, bringing a figment mean greet back, all those things to me pointed in a right direction. And now it's nice to know that and feel like not only is parks and resorts in the right direction, but I think really everything will be. And, and you know, is Bob only going to be there for two years? Who knows? Who knows, right? I mean, the, the real reason he's back is there, there wasn't a clear candidate to take the job right now. And I mean, obviously there's, there's no one better to give the job to. I mean, Bob, um, you know, the, the last resurgence of the company was when Bob Iger came in following the Eisner years, right? We saw the parks, you know, that, that I, I still think the outside of my childhood, the best era uh, for the parks and resorts, for the studio, for the company as a whole, like those years right after Bob Iger takes the reins, you know, you got to give people a little bit of time. So like 2007 to like, I don't know, 14, 15 until Chapek takes parks and resorts. Um, I think we're really just for every, in every department of the company, I think just felt like another golden era, kind of like the start of the Disney decade. Um, or I imagine how maybe people felt, you know, um, in the 1960s when the, you know, Disneyland was doing all these incredibly um, innovative things and Disney was dominating, you know, the family box office and um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a, this is an incredible moment and one we've hoped and prayed for. And, um, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad it has arrived. Mickey's very Merry Christmas party at the Magic Kingdom is now fully sold out for this year. When attempting to purchase tickets on the Walt Disney World website, guests are not able to access the calendar to select an event date and complete checkout. Of course, the Magic Kingdom hosted modified Christmas parties, Disney very merriest after hours uh, in the last two years due to COVID-19. This year's parties have been more like the events prior to 2020 and the more popular Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party sold out for the first time this year, many weeks in advance. You can read a full guide to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party 2022 on our website, which includes photos and videos of all of the entertainment offerings, all the food, all the attraction overlays and more. 
Holiday sound effects are starting to be turned on at the Disney Fab 50 statues throughout Walt Disney World Resort. We checked on all the statues in Hollywood Studios over the weekend, and we heard uh, Woody had some things to say as well. Uh, then when we checked on Sunday, a bunch of the statues at the Magic Kingdom were saying Merry Christmas and the like as well. So while we were at Studios on Saturday, only one statue did it. On Sunday, seemingly all of them at Magic Kingdom did it, so it seems to be working. Uh, this is a lot better than Halloween. They just kind of played like a spooky musical clip, which I thought was lame. This, they actually went and recorded character voices, which is thoughtful and cool and might be one of the first cool Magic Band Plus things I've seen so far. The Spaceship Earth standby entrance sign is back in operation after being covered for well over six months at Epcot. Here's a picture from July of 2022 of the black panel over the standby entrance sign, which also includes the digital wait time display. Uh, that had been there at least since the spring. The black panel is gone. The sign is now working again. You may remember over the last several months, they've had an A-frame. Uh, what they use as a festival booth menu board has been used as the standby entrance wait time sign. Why this took six months to fix, I have no idea. Tokyo Dining, a table service restaurant in the Japan Pavilion at Epcot, has been closed. It will be closed for remodeling. through. Uh, it's closed on November 20th. It will be closed until the summer of 2023 when it will reopen with a new look. No further information is available at this time. The project and closure were announced over the weekend with very little notice. Tokyo Dining reopened for a limited time during the holidays in 2020, then reopened on a somewhat limited basis in 2021. With the closure of Tokyo Dining, Takumi Te, uh, the signature restaurant located on the ground floor of the same building in the pavilion, is expected to reopen any day now. It'll be the first time that restaurant has operated in any capacity since March of 2020. Are you a passionate and knowledgeable Disney fan? Do you have professional experience as a graphic designer or video editor? And are you looking for work? Well, then WDWNT has an opportunity for you. We're seeking a dynamic, talented, and detail-oriented graphic designer who's passionate about the Disney theme parks and has a comedic mind to match their eye for quality. The ideal candidate will be able to translate ideas and images into a high-quality finished product. The ideal applicant will be a self-starter with an extensive knowledge of the Disney theme parks and an ability to manage multiple deadlines in a fast-paced environment. The graphic designer slash video editor role is full-time, working an average of 40 hours a week with the potential for paid overtime. Full-time employees are eligible to participate in our health insurance plan as well. And there is a scenario where we may be willing to hire one or more part-time employees uh, for the right fit. Some night and weekend work is required, and Thursdays, of course, in particular, are critical, as a number of graphical bits are typically required for WDW News Tonight, our Disney-focused comedy show. Of course, our studio is located in Celebration, Florida, but we will consider remote applicants as well. Required experience includes graphic design, photo manipulation, motion graphics, familiarity with web, social, and YouTube, video editing experience with Adobe Premiere and similar products, and audio mixing and recording. The start date is immediate. If you're interested in this position, you can please fill out our application at WDWNT.com and attach a resume that includes examples of past work. If you meet the initial qualifications, we will contact you for additional information and a follow-up test. Please do not inquire via social media in the comments here, via email to any team members or anything like that. But uh, just wanted to shout out, since this is essentially a job that works mostly uh, with our YouTube department, uh, we thought this would be a good place to maybe find someone. So please go fill out the application if you think you'd be a good fit. Buzz and Woody have joined Jesse in dressing up for the 2022 holiday season in Toy Story Land at Hollywood Studios. Buzz is sporting a red Santa Claus hat with a fluffy white trim. The cowboy and cowgirl have matching, quote-unquote, ugly holiday vests layered over their classic outfits. Jesse's vest is green with candy cane trim and peppermint patches, while Woody's vest is red, also with candy cane trim. It features a Christmas tree patch and a gift box patch. He's traded in his red bandana for a green one as well. He's also carrying an oversized candy cane in his holster, and there's a sprig of holly in his hat. Guests at Disney's Hollywood Studios can now see some of the Disenchanted costumes in person at Walt Disney Presents. Disenchanted, the sequel to Enchanted, premiered on Disney Plus last week. And in it, Giselle, played by Amy Adams, wishes for a fairy tale life, but things go wrong when she begins to turn into a wicked stepmother to Morgan. One of the costumes on display is Giselle's peacock inspired wicked stepmother dress. These costumes were all designed by Joan Bergen. 
Alongside Giselle's costumes are costumes for her rival, Malvina Monroe, played by Maya Rudolph. King Edward, played by James Marsden, who is, again, fantastic in this, by the way. Nancy Tremaine, of course, Dina Menzel. And Morgan Phillip, uh, played by Gabriella Baldoncino. Not all melting snowmen are a bad thing, and at Disney's Hollywood Studios, guests can enjoy a melted snowman on top of a sugar cookie, now available at Pizza Rizzo. It's the first thing at Pizza Rizzo that looks weirdly melted that is meant to be that way. So, uh, <laughs> the melted snowman sugar cookie is $4.29. I cracked myself up. Sugar cookie with red and green sugar, white chocolate marshmallow, dark chocolate top hat, raspberry chocolate twigs, orange sprinkle, uh, chocolate-covered cocoa nibs as well. The review at www.nt.com. Guest relations at Walt Disney World hears lots of complaints and issues from visitors every day, and this summer they fielded one encounter that was undoubtedly more unorthodox than usual. A 37-year-old Chicago man wanted a refund for his theme park tickets when he visited guest relations at Hollywood Studios on August 14th, according to a newly released Orange County Sheriff's Report. The reason why? Because he was on a special government mission, he explained. He told Disney he was working for the federal government and he was in the middle of a special operation to review the security procedures at the theme parks and anywhere else he travels to, the sheriff's report said. Quote, the man had stated to several team members that he needed a full cash refund for his tickets because it was more secure and he wanted passes to get to the front of the lines but was not allowed to tell them more for security reasons. The man said he was with his son who was helping with his project. An Orange County Sheriff's deputy got involved eventually. The man kept up his claims to law enforcement. He told the deputy that he, quote, was working with an experimental government satellite to mentally feed security information from all locations to the federal government. The man didn't have anything to back up his claims. He couldn't provide any contact information for the federal agency he allegedly worked for, and he didn't have employee identification to prove his story either. Deputies by now believe the man had mental health issues. They spoke to the man's six-year-old son who said he felt safe with his father. The boy said his father, quote, does things like this often, that he liked spending time with him, though. Authorities decided the man was not a threat to himself or to others. The man was not arrested because authorities said he hadn't committed a crime, but the Orange County Sheriff's deputy wrote an incident report to document the man's statements on record. However, Walt Disney World did issue a trespass, and the man and his son left the property. It's so nice. Disney security, always so sweet. Yeah. They, the sheriff stands there is like, you know, the, the, Something's a little off. Let's let's just get this out of the way. And Disney World trespasses the guy. They're Disney security man. They they drive me they drive me crazy. What a story. What a sad and weird crazy story. Cast members from Festival of the Lion King at Disney's Animal Kingdom thanked Elton John for his contributions to the music of The Lion King in a new video shared by Disney Parks ahead of the broadcast of Elton John Live Farewell from Dodger Stadium that aired on Sunday. You can watch the video on our, uh, on our website or on Twitter. Elton John, of course, composed the songs for The Lion King in 1994 with lyrics by Tim Rice. Han Hans Zimmer composed the score. John and Rice also wrote That's All I Need for The Lion King One and a Half, and John reworked his songs for use in The Lion King 2019. Elton John Live Farewell from Dodger Stadium was live on Sunday, November 20th at 8 p.m. It's now available on Disney+. Plus. Uh, and also, uh, there will be a special, a documentary coming to Disney Plus uh, called Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, the final Elton John performances in the years that made his legend. Elton John's final tour has been ongoing since 2018 and is set to wrap, wrap up in Stockholm in July of 2023. The Disney Fantasy cruise ship stopped its course to assist the U.S. Coast Guard in a search and rescue off of Little Torch Key on Sunday morning. The U.S. Coast Guard Southeast shared on Twitter at 10.13 a.m. that they were searching for five people about 50 miles off Little Torch Key, Florida, after a homemade vessel capsized during a failed migration venture. Nine people had already been rescued, some of whom were wearing life jackets from the six to eight foot seas and 30 mile per hour winds. Four people reportedly drowned immediately upon capsizing and one deceased person had been recovered. The Coast Guard has not shared any further information or updates. The Disney Fantasy was in the area, so it stopped to assist the search. Disney Cruise Line passengers on board reported seeing the U.S. Coast Guard planes. The Disney Fantasy is currently sailing out of Port Canaveral on seven-day cruises. The current sailing would have left port yesterday afternoon. It was passing Little Torch Key this morning on its way to the Eastern Caribbean. For the absolute latest on these stories and all those that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on your favorite social media platforms. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next magical trip. The best part, their services are free. 
Visit www.nt.travel for details. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. This is Disney Entertainment News Today. I'm Rob Whiteside and here now are the top Disney Entertainment stories. For the latest in Disney Entertainment News, watch Disney Entertainment News Today, hosted by Rob Whiteside. From movies and series news to stage shows, books, video games, and more, new episodes drop every Tuesday on WWNT.TV.